With the technology available today, anyone can put together an inexpensive e-bike quickly and easily. As I said earlier, it all starts with the bike. Sometimes the bike that has been sitting in the garage unused for 10 years is not always the best place to start, but I've talked with plenty of people who've gone that route. Whether you have a 500 watt motor or a 1500 watt motor, it's still a bike. So choose a bike that is in good working condition, is comfortable to ride, and one that you would feel comfortable riding for many, many miles. Once you have the bike you want to use, choose the motor that you want. You can choose from a front hub, rear hub, or mid-drive motor. As I said earlier, the mid-drive motors are more expensive and labor intensive, so for this video we'll use a rear hub brushless motor. Choose how much power you want based on your riding needs, commuting, hills, flats, distance, etc. Your e-bike will include the appropriate controller based on the required wattage and voltage that is required for your motor. You can get a great rear hub kit for under $500. To install the rear hub motor, place your bike upside down on the ground and remove your rear wheel. Your rear hub motor fits the standard 135mm dropout. Install the wheel with the washers in the correct order. See our video on installing a rear hub motor. Spin the wheel to make sure that the gearing works properly. Next, find a good place on your bike to attach the controller. Make sure that the wires are pointed in the direction of the bottom of the bike. You can safely attach the controller to your frame with two strong zip ties. Make the appropriate connections with your motor. Again, see our video and controller installation. Lastly, it's time to choose a battery. Make sure that you choose a battery that has the correct voltage for your motor, whether it's 36, 48, 52, or 72 volts, but make sure it's the correct one for your motor. The voltage is your bike's power. Then you need to determine how far you want to go. That's determined by the number of amp hours the battery has. The higher number of amp hours, the farther you will go, and of course the more expensive the battery. Once you've connected the battery to your bike frame using the water bottle screws, connect the red and black wires to your controller. Turn on the battery and make sure that everything works. Once you've tested your new e-bike, cover up your controller wires. You can see our video on dealing with e-bike wires. Now for under $1,000 you have an e-bike that can go as fast if not faster than a $7,000 brand e-bike. So for this video, I'm going to show you the unpacking and installation of the 1500 watt rear hub uh, motor that I got. And uh, it's got an internal controller inside the uh, rear hub motor, which is great. Combined, I got the kit and the battery for under $1,000. And it's just an amazing, amazing ride. Then I'm going to show you the uh, TFT 750 and how to program it to get the most out of the bike which has all sorts of ability to control the bike, uh, all sorts of settings, uh, and the onboard information that you get on the display itself, which is crystal clear, uh, is great. It's just a whole panoply of different information that you really want to have available. And what's great about this is that here's the, here's the LCD. It's all connected by one wire to these quick disconnects, which are waterproof. Uh, which is a great, it makes my life a lot easier for assembling this. And so you've got a connection to the throttle, you've got a connection to the LCD, and then all connects to the rear hub, which is where the controller is, with a uh, twist on that makes it waterproof and tight. So, uh, and as I'm going to show you, this is, they're snug, they do come apart, obviously, but this really keeps the water out and keeps them protected. And it's just a great system, really simple. And uh, here's my connections for my battery. And of course, you can connect any kind of adapter you need for the battery. But what, what's great is it eliminates those bulky controllers and all the wires that have always been something to struggle with, um, just in terms of where to put them, how to organize them. And all of that is built into the wheel itself. And so it's a 35 amp controller, very powerful, connects with this one plug. And um, it saves con connection time and setup time by easily cuts 30, 35 minutes off of that. And it's all built into the wheel. And of course, then it comes with a seven speed free wheel uh, because the, the motor's actually thicker. I'm, cu I'm currently running a 1200 watt, which is just a little bit thinner and can take an eight or a nine speed cassette. And then here it is, I've, I've put it on. And then as you can see, I've got my battery connector. But what it does is just runs one wire underneath the, uh, the bottom tube and it connects right up to um, 
the LCD display and then all the way back to the uh, controller in the hub motor and uh, it couldn't have been simpler to install uh, and again as I said it eliminates the bulky controller the only thing I had to do was put a lock nut on the rear wheel because the torque was so much that the uh, the nut that it came with uh, just kept getting loose through vibration but with the lock nut it's completely secure really tight and that was the only addition I had to do. So what I'm going to do is get on this bike. I put my 48 volt, 30 amp hour battery in the middle of the triangle battery, and I'm ready to roll. Uh, so I'm going to take a ride on this, see how it performs. But again, I'm really excited. I've, I've been looking at this for a long time. And so I'm just going to take a ride through uh, Santa Cruz, about put maybe about 30 miles on it and see how it performs. Now initially I can tell it is really powerful and really responsive, um, at least, well it feels almost twice as responsive and powerful as my 1200 watt, but um, I'm going to take it out for a ride and uh, you can join me just to see how this works. It did great on hills, took it on flats and traffic, um, and that's it, there's my 1500 watt uh, built in controller uh, with the color LCD. And I couldn't be more thrilled. It's just a great, great ride. So I'm really excited to show you guys the uh, TFT Color uh, 750 LCD display. And it's only been around for a couple of years, but it's great. It gives you lots and lots of information about your bike and uh, has lots of settings that are really important to control. It gives you lots and lots of options. It's really crystal clear, the display, easy to see in the sun, easy to see in the dark. It's just an all-around great display. Unfortunately, it's not available for all controllers. So we're going to start with the program. I'll show you. I'm going through the menu. It gives you various maximum speed, average speed, um, your miles per hour, your wattages on the right-hand side, your control, your pedal assist. And all, all you're doing here is working the thumb part here that has a power switch, it has a menu switch, and an up and down. And in order to access your menu settings, you need to double click the menu button twice very fast and it'll get you into the main basic settings. Use the menu to scroll through and here is the system. So as you can see, the, the first uh, on your display settings is uh, between Imperial and Metric. I pick Imperial. If you're in Europe, uh, you want to pick Metric. Uh, then you can control your brightness. Uh, control whether the uh, the screen goes off automatically or not, and then uh, scenes uh, is, is you can switch between digital and analog. I choose digital. Then of course the ba battery indicator, which I find one of the most important things on an e-bike, is you can switch between the percentage of the battery that's left, which is what I choose to do. Uh, you can turn it off or you can pick voltage. Now, I know this sounds really simple, but I'm so happy this uh, display has a clock on it. Uh, my other displays don't have clocks on it. It's just one of those simple things. Just to have it available is great. You can change the year and all the settings on it, but it's just... So then you can, by pressing the power button, you can go over to the basic settings where you can put your wheel size, your uh, battery voltage if you're running a 52 or 48. And then in order to get into advanced settings, uh, you're going to need a password, and the stock password for this particular manufacturer is 1919. So in order to get to the advanced settings, you're going to have to plug in your password. Or you can actually, there's a setting there to change it if you want to customize it. So here you get to pick your speed limit. I've maxed out at 99 kil kilometers. Your ampage, I've got 35 amp controller. Um, drive mode, assist and throttle is what I choose. You can pick just one or the other, or both. And then at the throttle level, I pick 50% because if you pick 100%, it just accelerates too quickly. So 50% is a really nice sweet spot for me. And then you press the menu button to escape back to the main display. And one of the things I really like about this display is that when I power off, it saves all my information. Whereas my other, my other displays... I'd have to start from scratch in terms of miles, the trip distance, so forth and so on. But this is great, so when I power back up, all my data from that trip has been saved, and I can just continue on my trip. Uh, it's just another little feature, but really important to me. 
So that's it. That's the uh, TFT color 750 display, and uh, I really like it. I've been writing it for a couple of weeks now, and it's and it's great. So I will include a link to the uh, manual below in the description. And again, thanks so much for, for watching our videos.